Welcome back, everybody. Let's get a sense of where the market's heading in 2013. Joining us right now is Jim O'Neill, Goldman Sachs Asset Management Chairman. And Jim, it's great to see you this morning. Nice to see you guys. How are you doing? We're doing pretty good. I take it you're having an easier start to the week uh, than you did last week after the Rolling Stones concert kept you out late on Sunday. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm still, I was thinking when you were saying what's keeping you up at night, uh, <laughs> last week plenty, but this week not quite so much. Well, let's talk about the fiscal cliff. Is that worrying you at all? The calendar is now December 3rd, and it does not look like these two sides are any closer to reaching any sort of an agreement. If this is an issue that, the, that we actually don't find a solution to the fiscal cliff, we go over the edge, what's it going to mean for the global markets? I was just, I was just listening and watching to your previous discussion. I don't, I don't, you know, you guys are a minimum lucky that the dollar is still such a reserve currency. When you compare the luxury that it seems the markets are giving Washington compared to the, uh, the complete opposite with a lot of these Club Med countries, the, the contrast is startling. But what, what I would, to me, what, what's really in my head this morning is I, I detect more and more longer term investors and, and you know, the cautious long only ones who are being influenced by this and starting to think, you know what, Europe has dealt with some of its long-term issues, even though the economies are weak, and given the relative returns and value on offering markets, I, I detect the first signs of people shifting more towards Europe from the U.S., because you look and listen to the kind of thing you guys were just discussing, and, you know, it's like a, bit of, it's like a kind of never-ending game in Washington. It's, it's a bit farcical, really. So you, you think we're actually in a situation where the talk in Washington has turned much more dangerous and exact, actually driving investors away? Well, I, I think, I think uh, you know, I, I personally have assumed um, for a few weeks that, you know, Washington likes it th its theatre and this, this nonsense will go on right to the wire. Uh, and if there's not a deal, no doubt they'll come up and tell us there'll be a deal two weeks later. But I think at the core of it, you know, the reality is, particularly in democracies and, and where governments are returned with very fragile majorities like, like uh, Obama has and this divided Congress, it, it isn't easy to solve fiscal problems, as, w as we know from many other parts of the world. And, and one of the few things I've learned in 31 years of being in the markets is, is never let a crisis go to waste. And it's usually when markets put governments under the cosh, that's when they start to deal with things. And... Even if there is a deal, it's not clear to me that it's going to be anything of major substance. But mm. all, all that being said, it has to be seen against the background of what's going on in the world economy. And the other interesting thing this morning is that the, the PMIs we've had in China and Europe are, are definitely showing a, a flavor of uh, a shift for the better, albeit very modest and gradual. Jim, this is Dave Walker. You and I both know hey, that the true numbers with regard to sovereign finances in Europe and the U.S. are a lot worse than advertised and that while the U.S. faces a fiscal cliff, which hopefully we can avoid, Europe faces a financial cliff because the U.S. has restructured its financial institutions and Europe has not. What about the practical yeah. implications of that fact? Well, I think, I, think, I mean, that, that is a, a big ongoing dilemma, but I think the thing that people are understandably relieved about, and here, here the Super Mario moment in the summer has played a role, that this spiral between sovereigns and, 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 and the health of banks appears, famous last words, to have been broken a bit in Europe. And, and that is definitely, an, you know, so the absolute worst uh, appears to have been taken out of the equation. But, you, you know, obviously Europe is years behind the U.S. in terms of reforming its private sector financial system, and that, that does continue to... Uh, be an issue going forward. But I quickly add, link to what I said before, I, I know investors that are looking at investing in European financials that haven't dreamt of it for years, and that, that's a mood that's grown in the past couple of weeks. Jim, it's Steve McMahon. W would you say the global markets are anticipating that America will go over the cliff, or do you think the global markets are anticipating that this will be resolved somehow? <laughs> I, think, I think the markets are assuming that uh, even if there is some shift over the cliff, it will be temporary and some kind of deal will be cobbled together uh, before the inauguration, uh, is, is, is my best summary of it. And that, that is certainly what I'm assuming. Uh, and I think, but I think markets are thinking it's not going to be anything dramatic and substantial. Well, part of the problem uh, is... But I think people expect some kind of deal.
part of the problem is people need to look at the rules in the Senate unless the Senate changes their rules. If you want to reverse uh, tax increases or spending cuts, you have to have 60 votes. That's what it takes in the Senate. And nobody has close well, to 60 votes. That's why I think it's really, really important that we try to avoid this before the uh, avoid the cliff before the end of the year, if at all possible. Yeah, you could be right. But as I said earlier, I mean, it, from 40,000 feet, it, it's kind of if you look at the election outcome and the the closeness of the control for the Republicans and the Democrats, you know, it's understandable it's tricky because to. The basic problem you've got is taxes are too low for the given level of spending. So one, one or the other has to give quite a bit or, or both have to give a little. And uh, it's not easy to do that in such a divided electorate. And, and even ignoring the games that are going on in Washington, it, it's not easy. Well, and we're dealing with a dysfunctional democracy, which we'll have to deal with at some point. Yeah, yeah but you, no. Jim, you, know, you guys are still chance. envious over there. I mean, you, get, you know, you cobble together these alliances between 14 different parties. You don't know what you have half the time over in the U.K. Do and then U.K. looks good compared to, you know, the rest of Europe and Asia. So, well, you know, maybe that's another thing that the U.S. is in the early stages of learning here. M many of these European countries, of course, have dealt with coalition governments as, as the norm. For a long, long time, you know, take Germany, the, the, one of the stronger, at least yeah. at the moment, parts of Europe. Coalition, complex coalitions are a fact of life there, and uh, maybe that's what's the slow dawning challenge on top of the underlying financial realities that the U.S. has got to start thinking about a bit more. Yeah, all seem, it all seems a, a bit new for the U.S. That's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we are new. We're, we're still a new country. Jim. <laughs> Everything's relative. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Yeah, Jim, well, thank you very well, I would much. Say, Go ahead. I think the PMI, the PMI this afternoon will be very interesting to see what part of any of this is influencing sentiment against the background of stronger PMIs around the rest of the world today. Because it looks like the world's gone into Q4 stronger than it was in Q3. All right, yeah. perfect. Jim, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll talk to you again soon.